Uh, beep, uh, October 1961. Uh, whilst being towed, it broke loose. But there is a couple of big rocks. Like there. Right, we're down here at uh, the boat launch at Crystal Beach. It's pretty quiet right now. We've just been down here, me and uh, Woody just chatting for the last hour. Uh, the skies have really opened up. It was nice, it was rather cloudy earlier on. Uh, there is forecast for some uh, pop-up thunderstorms this afternoon, so hopefully we'll get up the river and start heading back because the storms are meant to be coming from the east later on, which is rare. So if we come across any, they'll be chasing us. So uh, right now we just had our uh, coffees, a little bite to eat. He's just getting his ski ready. Uh, Woody rides a beautiful color scheme of the, uh, the GTX uh, 230, which is a color scheme I really, really like. Um, and I'm, of course, on my 170. So uh, today, uh, we're gonna head out to uh, the shipwreck at Shirkston, first of all. Then we'll do the lighthouse. And I'll show him around this area, Crystal Beach. And then we'll head off down to the Peace Bridge, Niagara River, and make our way up the uh, the, the Welland Creek. I won't show you all of that video because we've done that before. So uh, let's go. Just gonna maneuver out of here. Let the engine warm up and let Woody get sorted out before we head out anywhere. It's hot out here today. I expect it to be like 32, 33 degrees. Very high humidity. A lot of haze already out here due to the humidity. Unfortunately, Woody's just found out his battery's dead on his GoPro. He's come all this way, he's gonna get no footage, so he's gonna have to share mine. But well, anyway, he's just playing around with it still. So yeah, we're gonna head out to uh, Point Abano Lighthouse, which is just ahead. We're gonna go right past that, and I'm gonna take you to Shirkston Shores first, where there's a great shipwreck right there. Uh, the water conditions look good enough for me to actually put the camera down the water today to give you a good look at the shipwreck. So I'm looking forward to this. So on the way back from the shipwreck, we'll pull out of the lighthouse very quickly before making our way down to the Niagara River. Uh, shipwreck here at Shirkston, uh, known as uh, Steel Products. That's what it's his last registered name, anyway. Uh, but it also was known as Venus. Uh, it became shipwrecked out here, uh, I believe, uh, October 1961. Uh, it was being towed to be scrapped, and uh, whilst being towed, it broke loose and became stranded here in the shallow waters of Lake Erie here at uh, Shirkston. And it's been here ever since, since 1961. And it's great to ride through, it's so shallow you can see. So what also what happened is, apparently over the winters, when the ice uh, formed, 
uh, people come out here and try and salvage as much of the uh, steel as they could, especially in the 1980s when steel prices uh, rose astronomically. Uh, people will come from shore in the winter, come out here and start scrapping it. And that was until a bulldozer they were using fell through the ice and that's uh, scrapped that idea. And ever since then, this is what's left of it, this shipwreck. And I'm actually sitting right on top of it right now still. So I'm gonna put a camera down there and see what we can see. So I'm gonna turn my uh, cedar around and we'll put a camera down. There we go, so we don't lose the GoPro. Right, I'm gonna go back that way and come back through it. Actually, yeah, the sun's behind me then. It's probably the best thing. All right, this is what we're gonna use to put the GoPro down there. Get it down about five feet. Let's see what we can see. Woody's gonna follow me through, he's never ridden through here before. It is quite easy, the, the water's very calm today, which helps. So let's do this. As we were just filming there, <laughs> didn't realize how shallow it was this bit, but you can't see it, but that's the propeller of the ship right here. Uh, the tip of it is probably only about two feet under the water there. Uh, that bit's a bit lower, but that literally is probably about two feet down. Uh, but the whole propeller shaft is right here. And I've been here a couple of times, I've never noticed the propeller before, which is really odd. So we're at the uh, stern of the ship. I thought this was the bow. So we're at the stern and the bow is way over there. That was awesome to see, like absolutely fan fantastic. Really happy I saw that then. I just hope the uh, underwater coverage uh, footage comes out really good too. Over the years, this has become a very popular place for people with kayaks, uh, bringing out the snorkels out here and uh, going snorkeling and possibly even scuba diving. 
Uh, it's a good wreck. Mind you, there's a lot of sharp, jagged edges where people have cut the steel away. As you can see from here, that looks really sharp. Don't like that. All right, that was the shipwreck over and done with. We're now gonna uh, proceed up to the lighthouse, which is over there, but this area here, this is Shirkston. Uh, this is Shirkston Resorts. Stretches from all the way over there, all the way to there. And that's where Pleasant Beach ends, which is the public bit. So uh, this is a very, very, very busy place. Uh, sadly, a lot of incidents have happened here over the years, um, on the water and also at the park, but also on the water, a few years back, apparently a couple of jet skis collided and a few drownings. Uh, the water is very dangerous here. People don't realize how shallow it goes very quickly. And right now, the water may look quite calm, uh, but within seconds, I've been out here before, within seconds, you got three or four foot waves and uh, within minutes, you can have five, five to 10 foot swells, especially further out. So uh, Lake Erie is a very, very dangerous lake. Uh, most of the people that come down here to Shirkston are from the city and don't ride very frequently and they're unaware of things like that. But lovely sand dune over there and uh, some nice sandy areas along the shoreline. All right, just to give you an example of how shallow it gets, uh, that's the, uh, what, the beach front there for Shirkston and people drive down there with the trailers, launch the jet skis or the little boats and they have to come out quite far because uh, just there, it's just changed again now, there's only six feet of water. Uh, I can see the bottom from here. It goes shallow very, very quickly. And I remember seeing at uh, the beginning of the year, there was a uh, vehicle that got stranded out here uh, launching a jet ski. And he was quite far out. I have to get a tractor to bring him back in. So it does go shallow very quickly. Uh, seven and a half foot of water here. And we're easily 300, 400, yeah, 300 meters away from the shoreline. So that just there is the uh, public access beach, uh, part of Port Coburn. And so the Fort Erie town line is just over there. So uh, all that is Shirkston, private, and that little squidgy bit between my fingers and thumb that's a public access beach and that will get packed later on, but it's very limited parking there and there's a lot of private areas. So it is a beautiful beach. It's small, but I wouldn't recommend coming down here because parking is really hard to find. And there's a lot of local people here who uh, don't, take the, take, uh, don't kindly take exception to you coming down. So it's a shame. It's a private beach here, but it's a beautiful walkway all the way along here. One of the nicest stretches of beaches around here actually. All right, we're going to follow the coastline now and make our way up to Point Abino, which is just uh, beyond the bend there. This is a nice beach. I've never come this close to the shoreline here before. Um, now, don't. I'm wondering that might be public access right there. Uh, the blue garbage can is usually what you notice with the town, town of Fort Erie and town of Fort Port Coburn both use those blue garbage cans in public parks. There's a paddle board there. Looks like an entrance way, but the beach stretches all the way along there, and there isn't. There's only a few properties here, so this can't really be private. I'll have to find that out. But it uh, looks really nice. This would be a great day, a uh, great place to come with a jet ski and just moor up for the day and hang out. It looks like a really nice beach. Four feet of water here, sand bottom. So I did see a rock over there, concrete slab sticking out. But uh, overall, it's, uh, it's very sandy here. Well, that's a nice property. So I'll look at that property quickly. Alright, that's 
point having a lighthouse. I'm gonna head in there, I'm gonna take Woody. Uh, follow me in. I got it marked out. Uh, there is a way in. There's a couple of big rocks. We should go right between them. There should be two or three feet below you anyway. Uh, but just follow me in, there's a channel. It takes you right up to the lighthouse. And then you can just get off and stand up and hold on to your ski. All right. All right, so it's kind of a nice little ride in here. Yeah, nice right, ride. so we're gonna do, I'll put the other camera on and we'll ride in. Been here a couple of times already and I've already marked it out. So I've got a nice little uh, path to the lighthouse that not many people have figured out they can do, which is good really. Uh, but there is a couple of big rocks. Like there. And there. And there. You just gotta know where they are. You go right past them all. Shut it off. There you go. You want some beach? Just try and jump in now. You'll be all right. Yeah, you're going more of the shallow end. There you go. Well, many of you who watch many of my videos will recognise this spot. This is where I did the review of the uh, my GTX 170 and I also did the review of the uh, the GTX 300 Limited uh, right here right there and uh, this is Point Point Abano Lighthouse um, 1917 it was completed uh, the build of this to help with navigational aids of the boats going from Buffalo uh, Fort Erie well one Fort Erie maybe Buffalo along the river out onto the Great Lake and so on. Uh, decommissioned in the late 80s. I did do another video on this, so I'll just briefly do it. Um, decommissioned in the late 80s. It's now a Canadian National Historic Site. And it was handed over to the town of Fort Erie. I think they bought it back uh, about 10, 20 years ago, uh, which is now odd because this is private land here. This is uh, the land behind me is the Abino Association own that or maintain it and it's private land. Uh, so you can't stand on the beach there because it is private. That's the old lighthouse keeper's house there. But all that is private land. But as long as you're in the water, uh, you're fine. And if you stand on the lighthouse, technically you're on Fort Erie property because I own it. So, uh, yeah, it's nice. Usually, the only way you can get out here is via kayak. Um, yeah, kayak is the closest way. Or if you're smart enough and have a, a depth finder, you can use a, a sea doo and come on out here. It's nice, I come out here quite often and just sit here and warm up and have a coffee, which I didn't bring today. But because I'm not too far away from home, I can always call someone to get me one. <laughs> All right, believe it or not, we spent about 45 minutes here just chatting away. So anyway, we're gonna, <laughs> too busy yapping. So before the weather deteriorates, because we know this storm's coming today, we're gonna, head towards Buffalo and hit the river and make our way up to Chippewa. Just gotta follow my tracks out of here. So you gotta follow a certain way out of here because there's a lot of shallow areas. Over there is extremely shallow. Rocks sticking out, rocks just ahead. All the shallow areas over there, but there's uh, a marker out there. You just aim right for that. But about half of the way out, you can make a turn and you're fine. So we're in three feet of water still right here. We're getting to four now. We're 
in the uh, the mouth of the Niagara River right here. Uh, this is clearly visible for miles and miles. And last time I came, I didn't know what it was, so I had to ask. Uh, I kind of had an idea what it was, but I wasn't 100% sure. So anyway, it turns out that is the pumping house for the lake water of Lake Erie, which is, then becomes the drinking water for the whole of the city of Buffalo. So this is the uh, pumping station of, uh, for the drinking water. So all that water gets pumped into here, gets treated somewhere else, and then that's the water for the city of Buffalo. And of course, that is the city of Buffalo right there. And more geography facts, because I love my geography. Uh, the second most populated city in, um, in New York State. Of course, New York being the top one. And in the distance, I can see uh, a warship. It's funny, I've been down here several times, I've never seen it. I don't know if you can see it just on here, but it's right there. Of course, it's probably a floating museum. But anyway, uh, we're at the, t uh, the mouth of the Niagara River. I'm going to be taking Woody down here, so I won't be showing you too much video footage because we've been down here before, so... Uh, but we'll, I'll post some highlights when anything happens, put it that way. It's always fun going under the Peace Bridge, put it that way. All right. But uh, we're just sat here right now. It's actually very calm right here. Uh, for the river is usually a very fast flowing current but right now it's, it's pretty calm it's always fun coming down the Niagara River I never get bored of this it, it can be so calm at one end as soon as you hit it it really changes right we're going to go under the uh, arches here it's really starting to pick up the pace now I'm going forward six kilometers an hour, but I'm actually going backwards quite fast. 